The Six Degrees Closer podcast is brought to you by Apollo Performance. Apollo socks have it all. The high quality targeted compression supports joints and reduces swelling. The knit in energy absorption padding in the heel and ball of the foot has been shown in studies to reduce force, helping you do what you love longer and stronger. This is Beyond a Sock. Welcome to the Six Degrees Closer podcast. My name is Danny Jensen. Today we got an awesome guest, uh, somebody that has been highly recommended to me. Uh, we got Clay Ratterman. I said your last name correct? Yes, you did, actually. One of uh, very few. <laughs> there we go. So so before we start and have uh, Clay introduce himself, I am going to just kind of go down the flow chart of where Clay kind of got brought into the Six Degrees Closer podcast. So... Um, episode three, as you guys may remember, was Zach Tenor. Zach uh, was a former Division One football player who I had the pleasure of interviewing, and he's one of my really good friends, actually part of the reason why I started this podcast. And then I actually had Jackson Hayes on, and Jackson was episode five last week, and you are now going to be episode six. So thank you very much for joining me, um, and please... Um, Introduce yourself, tell us about yourself, and let's yeah. get going. Yeah, absolutely. So my name's Clay, as, as uh, mentioned here. I'm from Dublin, Ohio, so uh, Danny and I definitely crossed paths probably at some point in college. I had to have um, So I'm friends with Jackson and friends with Zach. Uh, we both played football together there. Uh, but yeah, my, my upbringing basically grew up in Ohio, uh, spent some time living in Michigan at one point. Um, so got to experience a little bit of uh, both sides of that rivalry. Um, but yeah, ultimately, most of my life was was in Ohio. Uh, played football growing up, played a lot of different sports, um, had a, an interesting high school career with football, and then ultimately kind of barely made it into Ohio State. It was uh, one of those deals where I was deferred and waitlisted and then finally got off the waitlist. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ultimately made it into school, ended up walking on there. Um, and then, yeah, graduated with a finance degree and have been kind of, uh, in the entrepreneurial startup world ever since. Wow. That's, I love how it's like so condensed, but there's so much to unpack still at the same time. Like we that we can dive in a gazillion different ways. Let's first start with how, how like you met Jackson. Cause Jackson was our guest last week. And I think it's just oh, yeah. really interesting. Just kind of the walk through the flow chart, you being the third of six people that we are going to have through this flow. And um, I, I always call it like a, like a wheel, basically, and we start with a six degrees closer in the middle, but then we got all these spokes. So, like, you guys are this one yep. spoke, and it's pretty interesting. Love to hear what, how you guys met and kind of like your relationship now. Yeah, we're, we're following a, a funny trail from, you know, Zach to Jackson to me in terms of uh, the, the football legacy at, at Ohio State and the walk-on group that, that we had there. It's so, so good. <laughs> yeah, Jackson and I have a, a very interesting relationship because – we met in high school. So we were actually high school football teammates okay. um, even before college, and, but, but loosely high school football teammates. And I say that because uh, Jackson actually transferred into my high school, I think when he was a junior. Uh, so it was, yeah, I believe it was our junior year. And he was like a, one of those guys that transfers in is like the big prospect, you know, okay, if you yeah. ever had that in high school. So that yeah, was I've Jackson had that. back then. He, yeah, he came from a, Came from uh, kind of a neighboring school. I think it was in, in Westerville somewhere. And, and uh, yeah, ultimately, uh, everyone was, like, super pumped because they were like, wow, we got this awesome guy coming in. And he immediately started on varsity. Love that. Uh, my journey was quite the opposite. So I was uh, very skinny, very, uh, I would say, um, overlooked and or <laughs> rightfully so. I was uh, yeah. pretty, um, yeah, pretty small kid in uh, – I'd say freshman year of high school. I was always athletic and, you know, decent at sports growing yeah. up. I uh, definitely had some speed under me. But in terms of, yeah, coming into a big high school where we were at, where, you know, it's hard to play, um, it, you know, took me a long time to eventually uh, get my spot starting and, and had to go through a lot of adversity from that standpoint. Uh, but once Jackson and I met, we, we both were starters our senior year, became a lot closer then. He ended up getting injured. Um, he had some college prospects, uh, you know, he ultimately went to play at a different school, uh, before transferring to Ohio state. And then funny enough, you know, we always had a really good relationship, but 
kind of lost touch for, I'd say, that year or so after college because okay. he was at a completely different school. Um, and then we, we randomly ran into each other at a walk-on tryout. That's, and so that's awesome. Uh, as serendipity would have it, the, the guy that was running the walk-on tryout at that time at Ohio State, I believe, uh, was the GA or one of the coaches for Jackson's other school. I remember him so mentioning that. Yeah. a whole crazy uh, turn of events happened. And, and yeah, we ultimately got to play together again in college. And then, uh, yeah, you know, him and, and some of my other buddies, we were his, his groomsmen for his wedding. And so we've, we've gotten, you know, we've had a lot of really cool experiences over the past few years. That's so awesome. And then, you know, the funny thing for me, and can you hear me okay I still? Yeah. Okay, I yeah, just want to make sure. Perfect. So the funny thing for me um, is that you mentioned like those walk on stories and or like or you mentioned those athletic things that I think every single person who played any type of high school athletics or college athletics, they all kind of went through something similar and they all kind of can like relate a little bit or like they were that athlete sometimes like some of our friends. Yeah, they were like the big athlete or they were, you know, their best friend was the be the big athlete that transferred into some school. So. I had, like, my own, like, kind of crazy story. Like, when I moved down to Miami, Florida, halfway through high school, I, um, I like, showed up there. I was, like, one of, like, two or three white kids on the team, right? Like, so they were, like, who's this, like, white kids stink at soccer, you know? Like, you know, they, <laughs> they, they it was just, yeah. like, very much you had to, like, get their respect. And they were a bunch of these, like, like the, the Hispanic kids that were just unbelievable at soccer. I mean, like they were yep. better than everybody. And I remember like to get their respect, I was like, I was like dying for their respect every day. I was like, yep. gosh, I just hope like they kind of accept me into like that, like their team, their like environment. And then once you get there, it's like, oh, finally, like, and then you're like one of the boys. So it's yeah. kind of funny how that went. What a, a great feeling. We, you and I can definitely relate on that. I was a, a white corner uh, so that was a dying breed. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. never were a breed to begin with. Yeah. Let's just, uh, no, so yeah <laughs> that's I a good a, point. I ended up, ended up switching to safety when I was in, in college. That's uh, hilarious. Before. Yeah. Um, no, so you yeah. get it. You get it. It's like, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm around Stop, these, man. like, I'm around these kids. And, you know, even in high school, I was still about like five, six. Um, I'm only five, eight now. It's not like I'm like grew that crazy, but. I'm about five, five, eight now. I was about five, six. I probably was like 135 in high school. Mm. Like I was like, you were talking like skinny, soaking yeah. wet 135 too. It wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't same. like I was, I was like really was pushing. Small end. Yeah. And so it, it was, it's just that like interesting. It's not like I'm like intimidating to look at either. Like I'm like this, like I got, I yeah, still have a normal you know? looking. Yeah. yeah it's like, we're, we're in the same boat. I totally there's, understand. there's nothing that like put me into that next like level where somebody was like, Oh my gosh, I'm really like worried about this kid. So I really had to like prove it. Um, especially when I moved down to Miami when that's like their culture, right? Like in Colorado per se, like it was a lot of like basketball players, football players, lacrosse was getting bigger. Um, but never like soccer wasn't like the sport that like everyone mm like went to college to play or anything like that. And so when you went to Miami and that's the only sport these kids have played their whole life, whole different world, different breed, yeah, whole different crazy. world. Yeah. It was, I mean, they were, and <sighs> some of them are still really good friends of mine. Um, you know, and, and just seeing that extra, that different culture and like how much they care about soccer. Um, it was really such a good experience and I have like, I, I loved it. So no, that's, that's yeah, so man. fun. Um, yeah, I had it. I had that same, like, uh, I think that that's that's admirable though. That gives you that that kind of chip on the shoulder. Uh, Absolutely, and it teaches you because you you got to work that much extra, you know, to to keep up with the that's you exactly know, just right. the, the normal competition. So I was the same way. I was when I was in high school. When I was like you know entering into high school, up until high school, it was easy for me. I was fast. Everybody was small, so it was like yeah. kind of an even playing field. Um, but yeah, I remember like a specific moment early on where it was like I was one of the weakest kids on, on the football team and being like, I, I finally had gone through freshman year, barely played at all, went, you know, on the freshman team. So yeah. that's like, I was trash at that point. <laughs> I love that. Um, so then, then went on to the, you know, sophomore year. So now I'm JV, barely playing at all. Yeah. Uh, and so then I was like, man, I got to make a, a I needed to make a decision. I was like, I'm wasting all my time here at football. I was, I was in this mode where I was like, 
you know, I, I'm doing, I'm going through the motions. I'm doing, you know, all this, this work, which is, it's a lot of work to just go through the motions. You yeah. know, you're doing 80, 90% of the work just to be there and then show up and, and get zero results. So yeah. I finally, something flipped in me where I was like, I'm so sick of just being like some average, you know, shit player. I'm going to yeah. start like I love it. actually trying. And so yeah. I, uh, yeah, started working out a ton on my own outside of football. And then basically, yeah, uh, made a, a big turnaround my, uh, my junior and senior year to, uh, to, to ultimately kind of graduate to that next level. Yeah. And then, so then you, and you, so you grew up in Columbus and then you went to Ohio state. Did you go to Ohio state right away? Yeah, I went straight to Ohio, okay. Ohio State. Like I said, I was deferred, waitlisted, denied for my major. So I was the guy that, like, I skated in, like, last second. Yeah. Legitimate. I'm not kidding. The final day of my senior year, there was a day at our high school where you wear, like, what shirt you're going to college. Okay. I was, like, about to be going to OU or somewhere else yeah. in Ohio. I didn't, like, you know, money-wise, we were staying in-state. And so, basically... Uh, yeah, I was I was working like a pipe fitting job at the time, trying oh to make gosh. money for college, and and basically get in the fu- like as I'm walking out the door, my mom gets a letter from Ohio State and was like, oh, you know, like this must be like the last day they send out whatever, and that yeah. was my acceptance, and so barely got wow. in, had a chip on my shoulder, obviously from all that, yeah. and uh, you know, ended up taking that chip and and working that into a. Uh, a lot of stuff academically as well. Ended up uh, very fortunately graduating in the the, the top one percent of my class in finance. And Love that. Had some some accolades finan- or, uh, academically that I definitely would not have had had I not had that initial uh, kind of chip on my shoulder. I I could see that because I'll be honest. Um, I'll be the first person to say that I didn't push myself quite as hard as I probably could have in college. Um, yeah. You know, like. Everyone goes into college and is like, well, I'm going to be the best athlete and I'm going to be the best student and I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm only going to like drink on select days and I'm only going to do that. You know what I mean? You like have that <laughs> mindset. The, you get the mental game plan. Yeah. Right? And then you get there and everything just gets tossed out the door. Like you're getting. Yeah, and then midway hits you right in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're at midway on a Tuesday night. You're like, what am I doing? So, yeah, yeah so I had it, that experience too. <laughs> and, and I just remember like, you know, you're with your, your teammates and, you know, at this time I was still growing. I grew till I was a, um, like the end of my freshman year in college. So I was like still like five, seven pushing five, eight a little bit my freshman yep. year still like, I think I weighed 145 my freshman year in, um, college. And I just remember being like, like, this is just ridiculous. Some of these kids that are yeah. playing you know, defense in like the big 10 were six, five big kids. That's just crazy. Let me just run you over. And I was just like, okay, this is a whole new world. I got to adjust. I either got to get faster, stronger or both. And like, yeah. so it was, it was very funny, but you know, it, it ended up turning the right direction. It was just like a process that you had to like realize all these people are great players. Like you're not just the man anymore. And, uh, oh yeah. Not, I mean the genetic pool in that, at that level is so crazy. Yeah. You're like, Oh my God. Like, I mean, it just, it just kind of <laughs> zones in, right? Like it's like, okay, yeah. everybody was here. Now we're all like in Here's this. Here's all the top 1% of everyone in the United exactly. States. Exactly. And then on top of that, then you have really smart kids in all your classes. Yeah. So I'm like, uh. Oh, I'm pretty smart. Like I'll just go in. I think my very first test, I got a, f- I remember this like to this day, economics, macroeconomics, I walk in to my friends. We'd have been studying like kind of off and on. Like I didn't really do too much. They did okay. They, they get their test back. They get a 73%. And they're like, damn, like not doing so hot. Cause you know, like whatever. I'm like, yeah. I'm like I, I had to have done better than that. I got a 49%. And I was like, dude, I had that same experience with the, oh, the, the first calculus class. Dude, <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I just remember being like, Oh, so I actually, cause in high school I didn't study. So I was like, Oh yeah, my gosh, I yeah. actually have to study. Like this is, it was like, it was the first time that I was like, I have to make a change. That was, it was that 49% in macroeconomics. I still ended up with a C in that class cause there was only three tests. Um, yeah. somehow I pulled it back to a C 
That's crazy. But, That's impressive, actually. But Very, I was just I, I like, know the exact class. Uh, I know, I know what you're talking about. Oh my yeah. god, how, you know, it, it puts stress on me. And then I was like, you know, I can't be ineligible for soccer, so I'm like over here, like, and you know, there, there's ways to work around everything, basically. But they were basically like, your second test matters, like everything. So my second test, I'm just killing myself at Thompson Library, um, yeah. and I get like a, I think I got like an 85 percent or something like that. And I was like how much harder can I study? Like, I didn't, I didn't even know how to study. It was just like, I just was going, doing what I thought I knew. So funny yeah, how that man. works. And then, and then you ended up, what year did you walk on at Ohio State? Um, let's see. I had a, a very wild uh, walk on journey. So I, I ended up freshman year. So the, the, the background story, my grandpa basically was, was sort of my, core supporter in, uh, in football growing up. And so he, nice. he was kind of the guy that was like number one in the stand, like first person in the stands for every high school game yeah. and like was really pushing me to, to play college ball in some ways. My dad as well, my, you know, both my parents were super supportive, but he was kind of that uh, extra little push. Um, and so he ended up, he was in, uh, he had cancer, so he was in hospice care uh, my freshman year, which is 2014. Um, I wasn't playing football at that point. And I had some other prospects, like other colleges, but just I wanted to go to Ohio State. There was no point in even pursuing any of that. So, yeah, um, yeah ultimately when I was there, they win the national championship my freshman year. Yeah. Um, so I'm watching that, and, like, it was a very bittersweet moment because for some reason part of me felt like I could be out there. Uh, and then another part of me was, was – uh, you know, I was kind of done with football. I had played, yeah. uh, you know, my whole life. And I was like, God, man, that's, you know, it seems like a lot of work as well. And yeah. also nobody would have at that time thought I could do it anyway. It was just more of like a, you know, I have a lot of, you know, self-belief personally. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> like, I know but, I can do it. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. that's all it is. Uh, I wouldn't that's all say matters. that externally and probably at that time. Cause it's uh yeah, I, I don't like to externalize a lot of those things, but yeah, anyway, I get it. I, um, I, my grandpa was in hospice care, ended up passing away maybe a week after that game. Wow. Um, and so before he had passed away, like my last little visitation with him, I promised him that I was going to walk on, which was a, I That's wasn't, cool. I didn't know he was going to pass away that quickly. I honestly, at of the course. time, didn't really know what hospice care was. Okay. Um, it was more of like a, like, you know, I'm going to try to walk on. Um, so then once he did pass away, I was like, no one knew that I made that promise to him, but I was like, oh shit. Like. I yeah. knew that I made that promise to him. So yeah, I was like, oh, shit, man, I've got to I got to really try to do this. And so, oh, man, I went on a long journey of, you know, I had always been lifting and keeping up with with all that. So it wasn't, you know, really a physical thing, but trying to figure out how to walk on is confusing in general. Uh, There's no process. The only thing on the entire Internet was one Reddit post from like 2000, like eight or nine. Oh, my gosh. Um, and so. Yeah, anyway, I, I tried the Ohio State's fastest student race. Uh, that was my first, like, attempt, you know, the little spring game That thing. is so Are funny you, you say that because I remember that. I remember because at the time, I don't know, I, we, like, somehow had a connection. I don't remember how now that I'm thinking about this. Well, so you played soccer. So yeah. uh, my my girlfriend all through high school and into college is Bryn Schlemmitz. Oh, that's um, – so I knew like that. A, I knew that. Bryn's still a very, very close friend of mine. She's – one of the best human beings of all yeah. time. By the way, probably wouldn't have made it through college, even all the way up through my senior year without Bryn, Joel, Muzz, a couple of my, like, original homies. Yeah. Like, Bryn really carried me through, like, a lot of... Uh, That's funny. She she was, like, my uh, my academic tutor for everything. <laughs> Her and, and Joel and, and uh, Muzz. I love that. Okay, yeah, oh, okay. So now things are coming back to me all of a sudden. Like, things are, like... Fl- That's how... When, you, when, he's, when Jackson said your name, I was like... I think I know Clay somehow, but I, I knew that you were like football player and I like went on your like LinkedIn. I kind of like did a quick little stock of you. And so then I could, um, you know, figure out more about you. And then, but I didn't put that two and two together. Okay. So then you yeah. did the spring thing. I remember that you did well in it too. Yeah. So I did it twice actually. The, so weirdly enough, the first year, like, to, to condense the story, I did it once, made it to the finals, but didn't, didn't, or maybe I did run in the spring game. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, I did it a second time because my thought process was if I win this thing, 
surely they might want to give me a look for, for football, yeah. which was not the case at all. It had nothing to do with it. Uh, but it was just me trying. I, I was emailing everyone, trying to figure out, you know, who is the connection here? What do yeah. I need to do? Um, and, and I had a, a other high school friend that was on the team. So that gave me some confidence. Yeah. Um, that it was possible at least, but he had like a very good connection to get in. Okay. Um, of which, yeah, I did not have any of those. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, ultimately, you know, went to one tryout. That was the tryout that I found Jackson at. And then from that tryout, they didn't have any roster spots. Yeah, but I remember Jackson. Um, they wouldn't have, I don't think, on. taken me at that time anyway. Like they told Jackson, like, hey, we got you on a short list and we'll contact you when there's roster spots. Me, they just completely dismissed. Okay. Um, and so at that time, weirdly enough, I, I had, uh, I was on the TV show American Ninja Warrior. Okay. That show was, was filming the same day as the tryout. Like I had to fly to LA the same oh, day as my tryout. Interesting. So I was in a really weird situation. I was working at Rogue Fitness at the time. Okay. Work like just training there every day yeah. and, you know, doing what I could just throughout that summer. And then, um, yeah, so Bren actually was on the show with me as well. Um, so I, I have that. to choose if I'm going to basically go to this initial tryout or fly to uh, to L.A. And basically, I, I just cheated the producers, rebooked the red eye, like, later that night, and then, like, went to the tryout, then flew to L.A. And oh, my God. It was a whole crazy thing, but yeah. ultimately didn't make the team anyway, go on Ninja Warrior, lose on Ninja Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the I'm week of losing. Week of losing. It was like a bunch of L's. <laughs> I mean, we did, we did okay on Ninja Warrior. We, we won some parts, but yeah. obviously not the, not the whole thing. And so, uh, anyway, I just felt, like, destroyed. Like, I got yeah. back, and I'm like, dude. God dang it. Like yeah. I've been working so hard for so long and none yeah. of this stuff's panning out. Um, so honestly, I, I, I kind of wrote off the football thing. Fair enough. Uh, you know, in my opinion, I did everything I possibly could. Yep. And I was going to keep doing everything I possibly could until my time in college was done. Um, and then ultimately there was another tryout and Jackson and, you know, some of my two of my closest friends that uh, actually Jackson and Nick, basically the only two people that, that we walked on oh. with that made it through everything. Yeah. There's literally out of our class, we're the last, the only people that made it through. So, Jeez. um, yeah, we ended up making the team that next tryout off of, you know, a bunch of other crazy circumstances. And yep. Yeah. Ultimately, uh, ended up going on we were big 10 champs our last year That's and fun. rode off in the sunset and, and kind of graduated. What a good time. Yeah. What a good time. That's so cool. And then, all right. So then college wraps up. What, what does Clay do? following college oh man I, was, the, I mean you probably experienced zach's probably talked about this too jackson probably alluded to it there's a definitely a like a gap where you're kind of like hit in the face with not having all the stuff you just had in terms of <laughs> football and sports and college and it really sucks you you go from yeah. like this peak of college to like for us obviously being seniors and yeah. playing sports and having fun and then it's just a straight drop to the, you know. You know, the funny, <laughs> the, the best part about that drop is that you're not just dropping with, like, losing just, like, half your friend group, like, moves out of town. Like, you yeah. move, you lose, like, all this, like, enjoyment that you had in your life. But then the worst part is that then you don't have, like, built-in, like, workouts and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. The now discipline's I, missing. Yeah. The camaraderie's missing. The... Like the purpose of whatever you're yeah, doing is totally. missing, and also you're starting from zero. And if you like get in the zone of comparing yourself to other people, you're watching your other friends in the NFL, and you're like, "Fuck, dude, I screwed <laughs> up. Like, what is going on? Like, like, wow, these guys are is... crushing it, and yep. like I'm over here doing whatever." Yeah. Uh, oh man. My gosh. So, yeah, I I definitely had a period. I ended up, um, I was dating this girl. Uh, that was a pole vaulter in Wisconsin at the time. Okay. So we were kind of doing distance. So I was like bouncing between Wisconsin and Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, her and I ultimately like went back on Ninja Warrior another time. And then I was like trying to figure out, like I, at that time I had a little startup and I had a, yeah. uh, I was like living in my dad's basement. Like I had a, I could have went and worked in finance. I could have taken yeah. the connections from Ohio state, but I was kind of like pushing all that off. I, like I was that. like, that doesn't seem like me. Okay. Um, and so I had no money though. So I, I ended up running into the situation where my startup wasn't working, had no money. I was in my dad's basement. I had this girlfriend that's living wherever, like somewhere totally different. So I ended up just taking a, the quickest job I could find 
and to make money because my dad was like get the hell out of my basement i've done this before so that's good yeah yeah so i was like all right uh see ya and so i just went to austin texas that's where i'm at now yep um took a job at uh oracle just a big tech company and and basically was running my startup while working at oracle uh while having this long distance relationship and and uh yeah traveling a lot and and basically trying to get my my businesses to work and so Ultimately had some business success uh, about a year in, so was able to leave my job um, and then, you know, continued running that business, jumped into a few different ones and cool. have, have sort of uh, gone on the, the entrepreneurial uh, whirlwind ever since. But yeah, right now do I do consulting, so I have a consulting business and then I have a software company. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then um, can you tell us the name of your software company? Because I've seen it online but I'm not going to try to say it because I would say something wrong. No, you're good. It's, it's finna. It's just, we stole the first part of the word finance. Uh, very lazy. Uh, we, we like to get things done quickly around here. Okay. So. <laughs> it's, nice. Yeah. Finna. And then uh, instead of dot com, it's dot X, Y, Z. Cause we couldn't get the dot com too expensive. Okay. Um, but yeah, finna dot X, Y, Z. It's basically a financial tracker. If you're familiar with mint or, you know, you need a budget or, you know, Absolutely. any of these other financial trackers, personal capital, um, it's, it's a competitor to those is the easiest way to kind of box in your brain. Cool. Uh, but obviously with some pretty distinct differences. There you go. No, that's awesome. So uh, that's, it's so cool that you're doing that. And then you said you also have a consulting company, huh? Yeah. So I do consulting. That's like what pays, you know, most of my bills. And, you know, I, I've, like I mentioned, I had a, a good little run before, um, you know, once I left my job. So I've had a few different ventures that have, cool. uh, have done well enough to, to kind of give me, give me some freedom here, but um, yeah, right now I do consulting again, primarily in finance. Um, so my clients are, are usually some clients in Florida, Dallas, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, things like that. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well that's, that's super cool. And then there's a few things that I have to talk to you about. Apparently this is what I've been told. So you're, you also are a ultra marathon runner. Yeah. I wouldn't put or, it that way. I have I'm done. A, ultra- I'm kind of a non runner that has done some <laughs> ultra marathons. So, my dad's a huge ultra marathon runner. Oh, and nice. so, Hell yeah. so I felt like, okay. And then you also are a mountain climber. Somewhat again, uh, probably not a, a non mountain climber. that's climbed some mountains. Exactly. <laughs> and then, um, so those kind of like, I, I want to dive in a little bit deeper. So let's first talk about ultra marathon running. First of all, for the listeners, ultra marathon running is usually beyond marathon that's the best way to put it like anything beyond marathon. So 26.2 is marathon. You can do 50 K's hundred K's. I'm sure there's even crazier ones out there. hundred, you know, hundred mile runs. I know hundred mile runs are out there. Um, talk to us about your experiences doing this. Yeah. So, um, I tried to get Jackson in on it. I believe it or not. He, we still, still having a tough time convincing him on the, the running, uh, <laughs> No, so I, I hated running. I'm a football player. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we're not the, the most, uh, we don't have the best endurance, I guess you could say. Uh, we're, we're more of that short sprint, you know, I'm good at the 40 and, you know, leave it at that type yeah. thing. But um, my, my other friend, Nick, who is another just in phenomenal human being, uh, similar to Zach and Jackson, played football with us there as a walk-on, um, Nick and I, Nick was a 250 pound defensive lineman, maybe, maybe 245. I don't yeah. know if I'm giving him some extra pounds there, but he's, he's up there. He was a big boy. Like this yeah. guy's uh, yeah, big dude. And basically I convinced him to go on a six mile run with me one day just to see if, if he could do it. Cause he would destroy wow. me in any lifting. So I was like, I'm going to just take him on a run and see if I can whoop his butt and yeah. some running. Uh, and I sucked at running, so I'm not like I was gonna, he kept up with me just fine. And we did six miles. He's never done that. I think the furthest I had gone was maybe two or or maybe like four miles. I don't even know. Um, took him on that run. And then we have this other friend named Derek, who is like a blue collar. He was a well, like, you know, working on the pipeline welding. Like he's a, just a a, a hard human being, but also not in running shape at all. Like this guy was, uh, Basically, I took Nick on that run. Then Derek visits me in Austin, and he drinks like eight beers the night before we go on our first run. We go on our first run. We do like six miles. He somehow survives. So then we're talking shit to Nick, and we're like, "Oh, we, you know, we just did. We did seven the next day." So we're like, "Yeah, we just beat your record or whatever." 
Then that week we did like seven, eight, nine, and then we did a half marathon on that Friday. Okay. And then we're talking a ton of shit to Nick because we're like, Hey, like, yeah, you, you, like, you couldn't you do this. Keep up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So long story short, a week later, we fly back to Ohio and the three of us do a full marathon together. So we go from no training to a full marathon, uh, in, in like two weeks or something. And so do the full marathon, Nick and I finished Derek. Derek finished, but he had to walk at one point, which we counted as a sin. Yeah, uh, that was like not, of course. Not what was your What was your point. time? Because I've tried to do that. That's not that easy. Shit, man! It was like I don't even know, maybe four, uh, four like forty, like yeah, four four thirty. So I tried to do something. that. You know, I tried to do that. I gave my so I was like, I'm gonna sign up for a marathon. It's gonna make me train. That's the way I thought. Yeah. What I end, what ended up happening is I signed up for a marathon. I stopped training for a marathon because I was like, I don't like running. And then I, it was in Columbus, Ohio. I was at like the children's, um, oh. the children's marathon. Yep. And I, I was like, well, I'm still, I'm still like athletic so I can run. I can finish the marathon without training in under four hours. <laughs> I said that. That's like, insane. I mean, you, you're like the soccer background. I mean, I think that's insane. But. Yeah. So I go out to the marathon the night bef- the day before I'm like at pint house Drinking a beer and like just like I'm like making fun of it, thinking that I'm just gonna like walk through this. Yeah, it's gonna be right. I'm like, money. this is simple. I like <laughs> I was posting on my story, like I'm not even worried about the marathon. And like a little bit in my head I was, but I wasn't that worried. And so I would have had to run a nine eleven or nine ten, nine eleven pace to to beat the uh That's so through rough. through um through half marathon thirteen point one, I was at one hour and maybe like 45 minutes so I was like well, I, I was cruising, cruising. yeah I was cruising like eight, and I was eight feeling something. good yeah yeah I was like I was feeling good and I was like okay this is gonna be a breeze what I forgot to do so how this marathon works is that there's there is a 13.1 race going on at the same time and basically mm-hmm. it just like it just cuts so all the 13.1 people just wing that way to the left and you just continue straight well, what I didn't take into account was that I was getting all my energy from the people in the crowd. Mm-hmm. As soon as the people took the left, like 80% of the people in the race took a left, which means yeah. that 80% of the fans, actually probably more, 90% of the fans, because they were all, everybody was on like the first part of their course, took also a left. Like everybody stayed in that side of the course. Yep. So, you're so you're ending alone. this. So you <laughs> go from 100% of the fans in like this – awesome like you're surrounded like Good all energy. the way down great energy yeah. to 10 percent or five percent of the fans on this last 13.1 miles and i remember we're going up lane avenue i believe it was yeah i think it was lane avenue and i just remember like my legs are just like not doing good and i'm fi- it's our oh. first uphill and i'm like probably about 19 maybe 20 miles in i'm hitting that wall mm-hmm. and i remember i turn left on God, I don't even know, know what road it was. And we're, I see the 21 mile marker. I'm like, okay, I'm at 21. I got five miles. Like, let's just like go. So like yep. every, every mile had a kid that would sit there that had cancer that everyone would give high fives to and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm like yep. 21. And like, my goal is like high five every single one of these kids. So I'm running by, I high five this one. I'm like, all right, my goal is to make it to the 22, right? Like just keep going 22, 23, 24. And I get to 20, I, so, like, I go around, and you, like, some of these are, like, long straightaways, just long roads. Yeah, and I'm just, yeah, yeah. but I'm still cruising. I'm still, like, on pace, on timing pace. Um, I'm ahead of one of my friends that was training the whole, like, for the last, like, six months. So, I'm, like, He's feeling right, good. Yeah. But, like, I know my <laughs> legs are hurting right now. And I just went up that big uphill. And it's like, it was, like, my IT bands. And they were, like, starting to get tight. And I'm coming up. So, now, like, we're, what, like, Eight minutes later, eight and a half minutes later, I'm still on pace. I'm, like, cruising. I'm on pace at this point for, like, a 345 marathon. And the kid, small kid, and he's sitting in, like, one of those little kid chairs that, like, you just, like, would sit at for a lemonade stand. And I go, and I bent down to give him a high five, and I fell. Oh. Like, my legs just kind of, like, like, Yeah, I know the feeling. And. And I, and I couldn't move. So I just sat there and I, like I sat there for like a minute and I was trying to like stand back up and my legs 
wouldn't like move from like that position, right? Like, oh, so I locked. was like, yeah. they were locked, and I was like, oh my gosh. So one of the family members of this kid was like, okay, do you need any help? And I was like, I'm fine. Like, I'm come on, I'm like an athlete, I can do this. So like, I just like I they help me up and I start walking. So I'm just going to walk for, and like try to like loosen up my legs and I get like 10 or 15 steps and I just like fall back, fall again. Oh. Because all I was doing was like pushing my body through a limit that like I didn't train yeah. for. I didn't have the miles on my legs. I, I ran more miles that day than I had the previous six months combined. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mag- I, like actually by far. <laughs> and so then yep. my legs are locked. I, and I just tell this, this person's like, hey, I'm going to the finish line. Do you want to ride? And I just remember being like, somebody sent this angel to me. So they, <laughs> this person drives me to the finish line. And this is like probably, it took like, it was probably like over the course of like 30 minutes this all happened. So yeah. I go to the finish line. But like at this point, I'm freezing, right? I like have nothing. So I go to the finish line, walk in the back entrance of the finish line, get one of those um, blankets, you know, like the foil blankets to wrap yourself in. Oh, yeah. And I can't walk at this point. Like, I'm literally moving at a, the slowest pace you've ever seen an athlete walk at. It is horrible. And I can't walk. And somebody walks up, like one of the people, because I didn't know where I was walking, and gives me a medal. What? (laughs) So it was like, I finished. (laughs) I was like, I was like, I don't deserve this, but I put myself through enough pain that I'm not even going to say anything. So I start like walking and it took me like another 30 minutes to find my friends who were waiting for us to come through the real side of the race. So, and they're like, you finished? We didn't see you come by. I'm like, long story. I can't walk right now. Somebody dropped me off on the backside of the race. (laughs) It was horrible. It was the worst experience ever. And I just remember being like, and then now I see like all these people, like there's random like YouTube videos where people will come out and be like, yeah, my friends bet me. And I'm like, I'm like, just bet to finish the race because I could have finished. Like, if I wouldn't have yeah, pushed myself sure. to hit those marks, I think I could have finished. But when I was pushing feel, myself yeah. that hard, you can't go past the uh, yeah. It was the red line, there. and then so then for three weeks, so I was doing construction management at the time, and that was the job that I just took like to get my, a, a paycheck so I could like live. I couldn't. I was you would go up and down stairs in these homes because we were a home builder, mm. and I couldn't go up and down the stairs. So for three weeks, I, c- I literally couldn't walk down and upstairs. It was Dude, so I know, horrible. I know that feeling, the, the non being able to walk. I, yeah, I know a lot of those, those so feelings. It's I, quite incredible that you guys actually went and finished that race, regardless well, so of the time. So these weren't even races, by the way. I've never actually done a oh, real... so you just uh, ran 26 miles. I've never even miles. done a real uh, <laughs> marathon or half marathon. I've done a lot of them now, or a good handful of them now, I yeah. should say. But uh, I've never actually signed up and done one other than... Uh, yeah, we, we just ran around Ohio without stopping for 26 miles. That is, so, that is yeah. so good. I love that. I love that. But, but that was like a, that was basically this little internal bet we had. And, and to be honest, similar, I had a very similar experience in that, um, like our whole thing is like, you can't stop, but you can go as slow as you want. Okay. Um, and so like, as long as you are running, AKA like at the least turtle the jog, like the, going, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. As long as you got that going, we, we count it. Um, that was like our, our, our whole mission. And I will say that to this day, that run in that heat at that time was probably, it's easily the second hardest run I've ever done. Um, Crazy. And so, uh, um, anyway, we, we finished that we're dying. Like we're not feeling great. Um, and then we basically two days later, you know, that little high you get after like, I could do this again. Totally, like totally. that. Yeah, we got that feeling, and we decided to be complete psychopaths, and we signed up for a 100-miler a month in 25 days or a month and 20 days after that marathon. Okay. So where, where, was, where was it at? Cuyahoga Valley okay. uh, National yep. Park. So it's in Ohio. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we had no idea what we were getting into, literally no idea. Like, uh, all we wanted to do was again, finish. It was like, we didn't care about the time. Some might call um, you a psychopath. Some might call you that. I'm just saying. Yeah, that, that <laughs> this one was, this one, we were definitely in over our heads, uh, especially like, dude, we had no idea, like the preparation, the first of all, oh, yeah. not running was not good, but yeah. We were, we were thinking, like, mentally, we're pretty tough. We'll be able to, like, figure it out. Um, 
but our preparation for just basic stuff like nutrition and no, yeah, that it's not type there. of stuff. We, we thought we were prepared. We were like, or like we having like extra socks there, like extra socks, just, stuff like that. Random stuff, dude. Yeah. We had an RV and like we, we go to sleep in this RV and like this RV is not even near the race at this point now, but Love like that. that's where we slept the night before the race. We got, I, I wear this little whoop. So I have all the stats on it. We got one hour and four or one hour and 50 minutes of sleep the night before starting the 32 hour run that we had to do. No, that's smart. So that's we good. only slept for one so hour and 50 listeners, minutes. Listeners, this is how you train. This is how you train. <laughs> Ultra it was, I don't know if it was the nerves or we were all in the RV or what it was. Yeah. But yeah. I got one hour, 50 minutes of sleep and we, the race starts at 4 a.m. Um, it's the three of us. And obviously our parents are like crewing us and we went through hell we did finish we didn't make it in the cutoff time okay. we made it in like 32 hour 30 whatever 32 or 33 hours it yeah. took a long time yeah that's <laughs> awesome um, so yeah that was our first experience with it um we did another one after that that we dnf'd uh we made it like 60 some miles 65 miles it was way harder mm -hmm. way more elevation we didn't know that either like we were just total idiots again we love that uh and that second one that we DNF'd, we, yeah, we just didn't make the time cut off. Mm -hmm. um, and our friend Nick didn't do it with us. So the, the whole mojo of the thing was, was kind of a off. little bit off. Yeah, yeah. So we're training for another one actually right now. Where is um, that one going to be? For in? the summer. We're going to go back to Cuyahoga Valley and we want to avenge the finish within the time frame. Okay, of nice. Whatever their cutoff. Yeah. Was. And are you guys, are, are all three of you guys actually training now? Like a, at least a little bit? Yes, we're okay. trying to do it legitimately this time. Like with like we actually funny enough, we hired a girl. We ran into this girl in the middle of the trail during the hundred. <laughs> uh, during the first hundred, we became friends with her. She finished. She crushed it. Uh, and then we went on like we became friends online. Weirdly enough, we ran into her in a different hundred. Love that. A year later, in the woods again, in the middle of the night, and we're like, "What the heck is going on?" That's awesome. And so. We hired that girl to, uh, to like give us our running plan basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. My dad used to do, um, it's called the Susitna 100. Okay. It's a hundred mile race and you run along, along the rivers and stuff in Alaska. And it's like, Oh, that would be insane. Yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. Um, it's like the, you know, the Iditarod is like the 1200 mile yep. race, but it's with dog sleds and all that kind of stuff. It's like the Iditarod, but like with your own legs. On your feet. Yeah, yeah for 100 that's miles. That's insane. Um, that's got to be beautiful, though. Like, yeah. probably one of the coolest experiences. So my world. dad's my dad always says that it's like the best if it's like colder because then if it gets too warm, then your feet are sinking more, and then it's like almost like walking in sand the whole time. Mm -hmm. Whereas that like sucks. if the river's frozen, then you can just like, it's like walk it's like running on good ground like solid ground. Yep. So every year it changes. The weather makes such a huge difference in it. So it's like. If you really want one, if you want to like, yeah. and I think there's only, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about the, how many spots they have that sign up. So you'd have to like get on that. Yep. Um, you gotta but, get on the list. but if you want to, I'm telling you now from this podcast, try that one, go yeah. for it. If you guys get in, like, if you guys get like that urge again to go after a hundred percent. Yeah. We, we have ours for this summer, but like our original game plan was we do one a year as a group. Love that. Um, but it's pretty tough if you don't start training really early. No, so. you're, you're a hundred percent right. Cool. And then, so then you do some mountain climbing as well. Do you, have you gone around the world with that? Have you gone around just the country? How's that work? Yeah. The, well, yeah, mount like I love hiking. I'm yeah. a big fan of hiking, and you know, similar to ultras, I like to do stuff that puts me out of my comfort zone, as you could say. There you go. Um, in the least cliche way possible, I, I genuinely am curious. Like, what I like to find those like like deep corners of my mind where it's like I'm in total hell and and want to you know figure out a way. The the hiking and mountain climbing is not really as much like that. Okay, it's more just for fun. Just but, your uh, enjoyable experience. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and I went, you know, I've, I've done, you know, Montana and some other places, but, uh, this past, um, past September, I spent a month in the Himalayas. Yeah. Um, wow, that's so pretty, that's went with awesome. my brother went with, uh, there's a, we, we hiked through the Himalayas with a kind of a famous guru named Sadhguru. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, very, very interesting experience. I mean, they literally took Imagine taking a group of people where they, they pick people from every corner of the planet 
So our group's like legitimately a person from every corner of the planet. And then we're with this guru and then we're in a totally different scenario. We're surviving in the mountains for no a way living with the Sherpas. Was and, it like, was it an eye opening experience? Was it, f- <clears throat> what did you enjoy? Like, first of all, I, I assume you enjoyed it, question. but like, did, did you like really enjoy it? Or was it like, just like so eye opening that like, while you were in it, it was just kind of like so much to take in. That's a really good question, actually. No one's really even asked if we enjoyed it. It's kind of like a thing you just assume uh, that, that people probably enjoy. Um, yes, it was enjoyable, but in weird, different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoyable, kinda... like, about how you, you, you know, learn stuff. But it's also very difficult. It's very, like, yeah. super uncomfortable. You're, <clears throat> like, so, you know, we flew, I flew from Austin to Ohio to pick up my brother, to New York, to Qatar, to Kathmandu. Then once we're in Nepal, we're in the, the region of the Himalayas. <clears throat> then we take a super small plane into rural Nepal. And then once we're in rural Nepal, we get stuck there for like five days or a couple days and literally middle of nowhere. Like this is middle of nowhere in Nepal. Is Nepal fly- isn't Nepal where Everest is? Am I mm-hmm. wrong? Yeah. Nepal is like... Exactly. That's where most okay. people fly into Kathmandu and then they go into those different okay. places. So you can go to Everest. You can, there's a bunch of different places you can go. That makes sense then. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, China's right there to, or like Tibet, the Tibetan border's right there. And then India's right there. So it's like Nepal, India, and China are kind of this, they meet in this little area. We there. love that. Yeah. And so, uh, we, we were actually trying to get to a very specific mountain. Um, yeah. And basically, this specific mountain is technically in China. It's right across the Tibetan border, which unfortunately we can't get to because of, you know, China being closed and COVID and all that. And so um, we had to take this insane alternate route to get as close as we could because this is like this very spiritually significant mountain. And, you know, all these people have gone here over thousands of years, and this is the spot we're trying to see. And so we ended up taking this, this plane from super rural Nepal, like so sketchy, man. And you, you fly and you land in the mountains, like on, on a tiny, like 50 yard runway in the legit, in a village in the mountains. And like, basically we land there, acclimatize, we're living with the, the, the village that's there. They extract fuel from the plane and they put that fuel into a helicopter. And then after five days of acclimatizing, they fly you from the helicopter in like deeper into the mountains. So at this point, once we're into the mountain, into the mountain, it's like, there is nothing. Yeah. And you're yeah. living with just Sherpas that know how to survive there. Um, long story short, we, we get stuck in the deep part of the mountains. Um, so it snowed in September. It's not supposed to like where we were at was like the weather is insane when you're at 18 or 15,000 feet. Yeah. Um, so you never know what's going to happen. It's cold. It's hot. You're sunburnt. You're freezing. Um, and yeah, and anyway, it just one night we, we wake up the next morning and we think that we like hear people yelling at us like bang on your tents. And so we're like hitting our tents and all of a sudden, like all this light is shining through and we're like, what the heck? We, 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 we think it's like three in the morning, yeah. uh, but it's actually, it's morning time, but we couldn't tell because there was so much snow covering our tent. My brother and I unzipped the, the tent and it's fully stacked to the top with oh snow. So we're digging out of our tents and basically all the men have to like, there's, there's elderly people with us. There's, you know, some people that were sick. Yep. So we're like digging people out of their tents, trying to make sure these things aren't collapsing. And we ended up having this terrible snowstorm where, um, you know, the only way we could get out was by helicopter. Yeah. The only way the helicopter can get to us is if it's perfectly clear weather, because, uh, to explain it lightly, you're flying through the mountains in a helicopter. If you can't see, you're just going to hit a mountain. Um, and by the way, a helicopter takes, you know, let's call it three to five people. There's 200 people at our camp. It's an hour round trip by helicopter. And the only way to get the helicopter fuel is to extract it from the plane, which also can't make it into the village. That's miles and miles away. So we're like doing the math and we're like, we are really screwed. Oh my Uh, God. That is just insane. Talk about a spiritual journey. You know, some people, (laughs) you, you get to see like, we're with like the most spiritual people on the planet. And it's, it's, very interesting to watch. Like it is a difficult situation and like, um, but ultimately, you know, we, we had this blessing where basically 
the snow that final day cleared up the sky kind of and then you know we we spent five days there basically surviving in that that situation and then finally we were like unsure if we're gonna you know get out of this and then a helicopter comes the fifth day yeah everyone goes crazy you start having the snowball fight and it was like this massive party and uh that's yeah, so man, good was, that is a, that is an awesome 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 story like most people probably don't get a um experience like that ever in their life yeah and the, the circumstances make it even weirder right like it's like the the story of being stuck is one weird like yeah. one small aspect but the the month-long journey of the being with the <laughs> guru and all these different people and in a weird environment that was the fun part like this one weird scenario happened where yeah. we ended up getting stuck but yeah all of the other stuff is it was equally as as wild uh to, so to can you explain experience. just like you know, we probably got like another like seven minutes, but just like briefly for like the next like minute, what was this guru? Like, if that may, is that, is that like a good question? Like, what am I thinking yeah. about? Like, how do I wrap my head yeah. around what this guru is? It's a great question. Um, and you know, I was curious myself. I'm not like, <clears throat> you know, I grew up Christian and, you know, I don't know. I, I like to explore a bunch of different stuff and try to kind of wrap my own mind around things. And so I'm always open to, you know, hearing other people and, and listening to different things. And so I'm, yeah, very open-minded. So uh, I had done this meditation program through this specific group. It's the only way you can get invited to go to this this thing, this journey. Okay. Uh, it's like a pilgrimage in, in our culture. It'd be like a spiritual sojourn in their culture. Okay. Very like... Uh, time-tested practice that they, they like to do. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, this guy's, I'd say, very well-known, um, very insanely famous in, like, India and, and the, you know, those parts. Um, but, yeah, I guess a guru, I don't want to butcher it for, for him. Sadhguru means, the word Sadhguru means uh, uneducated, which basically means, like, he didn't, uh, he was, he didn't learn any of this stuff. Like, he didn't, he wasn't taught this. He didn't go to school for this. He like, this isn't like he read the books on yoga yeah. and things like that. This is like all from his experience. Wow. Um, and so he, yeah, I, I guess to answer the question, I still don't really know. Like a guru is someone that helps you kind of try to unlock things within yourself. Of course. Yeah. Is yeah. a good way to do it. They're yeah. kind of like a, a mirror. He's really good at, at holding like a, like his semantics, the way he uses words yeah. are very, very specific. He'll never say anything that he doesn't mean. And he's like really good at telling stories and like using analogies, but he'll never describe something a different, like a way outside of exactly the words that he means. Wow. So okay. he won't try to re-explain something to you, like unless it's using a story or analogy, but he, he's like a very... A stickler for semantics would be a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, okay. No, that's... Yeah, I don't that's, really know how to describe him. You no, can look him up. He's, that's he's fascinating. on YouTube everywhere. You oh, what's it, what's him. his name? You can plug him here. Uh, it's like, you spell it S-A-D-H-G-U-R-U. G-R-U. It, again, he's like really famous. He's been on Joe Rogan and, cool. you know, no, I'm, different. No, I'm definitely going to like just go dive deep a little bit and just... Ex- yeah, he, I want. I just want to see like... stuff out there. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> so fun. Okay, so... <clears throat> probably like the last thing that we're going to like wrap up a little bit with is like, so you've been doing all this. What really like is what got you into being more of an entrepreneur? Let's just say, you know, we got, we have another like two or three minutes, just like why an entrepreneur for you? You know, you Mm -hmm. had all these great grades in school. You could have just rode, rode off in the sunset in a finance job and called it good. Yeah. Uh, well, a couple things. I think I'm a weird case on it because I think I, I think there are you know some people that are more born a little bit that kind of direction, and then some people that are like you know end up becoming more that direction. I think Absolutely. I was more on like the uh, I've had the entrepreneurial bug for since I was a kid. Yeah, you know I, I was a lawn mower, door knocker, you know that type of person growing up. So uh, I think part of me definitely has that in me, and I also cannot fathom having a job <laughs> like I literally like yeah I, it kills me inside to think that I'd have to go you know do something that I don't want to do specifically now if it's something I, I love doing or whatever of course you know that's different 
And I say that and it's funny because I do a lot of things that are very disciplined and regimented and things that I don't want to do all the time. Yeah. But it's the fact of like it being imposed upon me. Interesting. It's like the, I like the idea that. that I hate. Trust me, I, uh, I, I get it. I get it. I'm, yeah. I'm actually currently in my own process to um, working my way out of corporate America. So I think okay, that, yeah. which is part of the reason, one of the reasons why I started a podcast, but just kind of like learning more from the amount of entrepreneurs I've had on here and everybody kind of has their own way to look at it. But I really like the way that you said that and just that, like, you just don't want that piece opposed on you. Not that you don't want to do uncomfortable things. You just, it's, it's your, your life, you know, whatever it is. So I love that. Exactly. I love exactly. that. Exactly. And, and I think there's a, yeah, a good distinguishing factor of like, you know, one of my highest values is freedom and freedom comes in my opinion, a lot from discipline. It's like a, a lot of the things that, you know, if you're financially disciplined, you, you'll have financial freedom. If you're, you know, physically disciplined, if you're nutritionally disciplined, you're going to have a good, you know, sound body, mind, things like that. So, um, it's not about uh, avoiding the hard things. It's about you know, you being the one that decides to do them rather than, uh, you know, like you're, you're kind of in control from that aspect. So that's kind of the freedom that I'm after in, in a sense, but um, yeah, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, um, the, the biggest thing I've noticed is when you when you don't work for someone else and you don't have the stable paycheck, um, you know, there's a lot of hard things that come with that, especially like I've gone through tons of different businesses and journeys. I failed a million different times. Absolutely. Um, and so it is very difficult. People underestimate how hard it is. Um, but on top of that, it's, it's, a uh, it's really rewarding to know that you're fully self-sufficient Absolutely. Um, that like if you don't have any income, you know how to sell, you know how to build product, you know how to market, you know how to I love it. at least make a living for yourself. So I think that part's really rewarding. And I also think um, just the, the entrepreneurial angle, like for me, I love building stuff. I love building teams. I yes. love building businesses. So it allowed you to kind of like do every aspect and, and not rest necessarily just be like down that alley. So, yeah, exactly. That's, I love that. That's kind of spot on. Clay, I, I want to continue a conversation. I'm learning a lot from you. I think that you're fascinating. We got to close it down just a little bit here. Yeah, I no appreciate worries. your time. Um, I think you have some of the best stories. So I'd love to hopefully get you back on at some point in the future yeah, and, and yeah. do this and maybe start your own like like little branch or something. Cause I mean, Oh man, I'm excited. I, yeah. I gotta make a, gotta make an intro for you here after but, this continue the spoke. But yeah. So, um, I really do appreciate everything that you have. Yeah. We'll, uh, uh you're going to introduce me to somebody else, right? That's the next step. And yep. then from there, um, I really appreciate you just taking time out of your day to, to join us and the listeners. Dude, so heck yeah. Appreciate Always it. happy to support and, and I'm pumped to watch this, uh, this podcast grow. It's a great yep. idea. And then the, the listeners make sure you rate us five stars, um, please follow us on Ooh. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and kind of wherever you um, enjoy your shows. I also have an Instagram if you guys want to follow it. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. It is those random acquaintances that make possible. Six degrees.